Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achern and welcome back to my OpenGL series. So today we're going to be talking all about errors. Last time we were able to use index buffers and I even mentioned one thing that you might do wrong that would cause an error to appear and actually just not display anything on the screen. Check out that episode if you haven't already. But today we're going to figure out what we can do to actually be notified or how we can find out what has gone wrong with OpenGL when we do something incorrectly. That's a very big part of OpenGL because OpenGL like a lot of things tends to be fairly fragile and we can upset it pretty easily. That's okay, that's just a normal part of development. How do we know what we've done wrong and how can we debug this as quickly as possible and fix it so that we don't have to spend the whole day wondering why our screen is black? Okay, so there's a few ways to deal with this. We're not going to talk about using external tools or anything like that. We're just going to talk today about what OpenGL actually gives us as a way of checking for errors and all of that. So basically, Right now, we have two main ways that we can check for errors in OpenGL. One of them is called glgetError. It's a function we can call. It's been in OpenGL since forever, since the very beginning. And it's so because of that, it's compatible with all versions. And it works in a very simple way. Basically, whenever we call an OpenGL function, if an error were to occur, a flag kind of gets set internally in OpenGL's memory that basically says what type of error occurred. And when we call glgetError, that gives us back a flag, right? And by flag, I just mean like an integer, basically. There's like an error code. And if we actually keep calling glgetError, it will kind of give us all the flags because sometimes it's possible for us to generate multiple errors. If you're really bad at programming, if you're really, if you've done something really bad, um, you might even have caused several different types of errors with a single open gl function call. And so because of that, glgetError will actually set like maybe three flags of three different types of errors that have occurred. And when you call glgetError, it gives you one of the flags, just an arbitrary flag. So you kind of have to keep calling it to get all of them. But basically that's just us kind of polling OpenGL, us asking OpenGL, hey, is everything okay? Have I caused any errors? Now that strategy is okay. The way that it's typically set up is that since pretty much any OpenGL function that we call might cause an error, let's actually take a look quickly at what an error might look like in OpenGL to begin with. So right now, since the last episode, we have this beautiful blue square rendering. Now what I'm going to do is just close this and inside my GL draw elements call, which is my actual draw call, I'm going to change this unsigned int enum, which specifies the type of index data that we actually have to just say GL int. This is one of my favorite errors to demonstrate because it's really simple. I've made this mistake plenty of times and it's, it's fairly effective. So let's hit F5. You can see that all we get is, well, a black screen. Our square, our rectangle is just not rendering at all. And you can see that in the console, of course, nothing gets printed at all except for our OpenGL version that we're printing. We just get a black, we just get a black screen. And this absolutely sucks. I mean, I hate this. Getting a black screen and then having to figure out what you've actually done wrong in which line, like maybe you, maybe you haven't set up your vertex data correctly. Maybe your index buffer is not correct, right? Maybe your shader doesn't work. Like what has gone wrong? It's very hard to tell. And in this case, of course, we're just sending GL int instead of GL unsigned int as the index buffer data type. So it, it, it would be great if we could just get open gel to tell us, Hey man, your GL draw elements function, you're passing an incorrect enum in there you should fix that, right? That would be fantastic. So the typical kind of workflow that we have with GL get error is first of all, before pretty much before every function call that we give to OpenGL, we clear all the errors. So we basically just call GL get error in like a while loop until it equals no error, which means that we've kind of retrieved every possible error from OpenGL. That's just a way of that. That's just a way for us to actually clear all of the pending kind of errors. Then we call GL draw elements. And then we call GL get error again. And that way we can kind of see, has this previous function called GL draw elements, has that generated any kind of errors? And if so, which ones? And then we can kind of print that to the console or something like that to figure out what went wrong. So that's one way of dealing with errors in OpenGL. It's pretty much the most common way, the most popular way, because it has been in the specification since 1.1, since the very beginning. And it's compatible obviously with pretty much everything. Now, recently in OpenGL 4.3, so it is quite recent, OpenGL added a function that basically lets us, well, it's called GL debug message callback. If we take a look at the documentation real quick, it's called GL debug message callback. You can see that it's been added in OpenGL 4.3. And basically what it is, is it allows us to specify a function pointer to OpenGL and OpenGL will actually call that function of ours when an error occurs. Now this is much better than GL get error because first of all, instead of us having to constantly ask OpenGL, Hey, is, are you all right, man? Is everything okay? 
it will tell us itself when something goes wrong. The only thing with this is obviously the fact that it's in OpenGL 4.3 and above, so you can't use that in earlier versions, but also another really good thing about this is it will actually give you more detailed information. Instead of just giving you an error code, which is kind of useless, like completely useless, it will even suggest things like it'll explain to you what you've done wrong in English. Like it's amazing. It's kind of dependent of course on drivers and stuff like that. But in my experience, it generally has been very, very good and much better than GL get error. Today, we're just going to be focusing on GL get error completely. It's going to be just totally about GL get error. That, that way is still good. And it's obviously compatible with every version of OpenGL. But then in a future episode, I will, I want to devote like a whole episode to GL debug message callback and talk about how we can actually use that because it is much better. Um, but obviously it's not really compatible with every version of OpenGL. All right. Anyway, let's talk more about GL get error. So if I flip over to the documentation here for GL get error, apart from telling us, of course, what it does and the fact that GL no error is what it returns when we don't have an error, which you can see also that GL no error is guaranteed to be zero. So that's useful information here. It also tells us that calling it will return an arbitrary error flag. So not necessarily all of the errors. And because of that, we should call this in a loop to make sure that all of the errors are reset and we kind of get information about all of the errors that have actually occurred with OpenGL. So that's kind of like important information that you definitely need to pay attention to. We should, we should be calling this inside a loop to make sure that we get all of the errors. Because if you don't kind of do that, then maybe you might be clearing an error just by calling GL get error. Then you call a function and then you get two errors back. And you actually didn't realize that, oh, actually one of them was from another function I called early on because I didn't clear all of the errors. So just make sure you kind of read this because the worst thing about GL get error is if you can't even do that properly and then you don't even know what's happening. All right, so let's flip back to our code and let's actually add all of this. So what I'm going to do at the very top is make a function. And I'm actually going to do this at the very top. I'm going to make a function static void GL clear error. And I'm kind of just writing GL in capitals here at the beginning of this function, just to kind of let ourselves know that it is kind of an open GL internal kind of function that we're writing here. And, and the purpose of this function, of course, is just to clear all the errors. So all we really need to do is call GL get error, just like that. And while that doesn't equal zero, so either the way you could kind of write this is does not equal GL no error. So while there, while we actually have an error back from OpenGL, let's kind of keep looping through this. So I'm just going to add a semicolon here and that's it. We don't really need a body. We don't care about error codes at this point in time. We just want to clear all the errors. That's all. Now, another way you could write this, obviously, because GL no error is guaranteed to be zero, as we read earlier, you could just kind of write this like that. So while GL get error is not zero, then keep kind of looping, keep retrieving all the errors. But I am trying to keep this code a little bit more clear for people who are learning OpenGL. So I'm just going to write it like this. Okay, cool. So we now have a way of clearing errors. Let's write another function here, which will actually print an error that does occur or all of the errors that do occur after a function call. So I'm just going to make this a void function called GL check error or something like that. And all this is going to do is basically, well, kind of the same thing as the other function is going to GL get error. However, instead of just kind of ignoring this, we're actually going to assign it to something. So GL get error, as you know, returns a GL enum, which is just an unsigned end. But because this is such a closely kind of tied GL call, I will actually use GL enum here. So while GL enum error equals GL get error, so I'm assigning it here. Okay, so I'm kind of retrieving the error and assigning it to error kind of all in one line. Obviously, since this is inside a while block, this while loop will run as long as GL get error, as long as this kind of error variable is not zero. So it's not false. So while we kind of have errors that we are actually retrieving, let's go ahead and just kind of print them out to the console. So I'm, I'm just going to write standard C out, kind of format this nicely. So maybe open GL error, and then in brackets, I guess we'll actually put that error code. And that's it for now. All right, pretty cool. So now we have a very, very simple way of actually checking to see if we have an error. So let's, let's just test this out. So I'm going to go down here to my draw function. Now I have made a mistake here, right? You can see I'm using GL int and not unsigned in. I've still got that code in. The first thing I'm going to do is call GL clear error, right? To clear all of our errors. And then finally, GL check error after the function. So you can kind of see how this works. We clear all the errors first to make sure that we don't have any other errors from other functions. We then call our actual function and then we check errors. That way we can kind of make sure that all of the errors are actually coming from this function and we're just getting the errors from our last function call. All right, so now let's just hit F5 and see what happens. Okay, look at this, check this out. So in our rendering loop, we're actually getting, if I just pause this for a sec, we're actually getting OpenGL error printing and then 1280. Fantastic. So we've 
we know that we've done something wrong. And if we go back to our documentation, you can see the following errors that we actually have defined. Now, which one of these is 1280 is the real question. To figure that out, let's go ahead and actually go to our OpenGL header file. So this will be in glue for us. If we type in 1280, we're not actually going to get anything because OpenGL defines all of its enums in hexadecimal notation. So what we'll actually have to do is convert that error code from decimal into hex. To do that, I'm just gonna stick a breakpoint into this error function here. I'm going to unselect this so that it resumes my program. You can see we have 1280. If I just right click here, I can go hexadecimal display and you can see the error code is just 500 here in hex. So if I go back to my glue header file and, so, and search for 500, maybe a 0x0 at the beginning, you can see that here we have all of our invalid kind of errors, right? All of our error codes. So 500 means invalid enum. Now at this point, it would be very wise for us to actually write a function which translates these numbers into actual words. So basically if our error code is gl invalid enum as it is here, maybe print invalid enum to the actual screen. That would be nice, but I'm not gonna do that here just not to waste time. So you can see that our error code here is invalid enum, which tells us that we've actually passed in an invalid value into an open gl function and specifically an invalid enum. Now in this case, that of course makes sense because gl int is the actual invalid enum we've passed. It should be unsigned int. You can see though that there are a few flaws with the with what we've done here and there it's not really it's not it's not that it's flawed it's just that it's not that great right i mean we know we're getting an error we know it we we can kind of deduce that it is inside the render loop and it's not in, a, in all the kind of open gel initialization code or anything like that that we did such as creating our vertex or index buffer because it's we're, we're getting errors like every frame basically so we know is something here right what we don't know is actually which line of code it occurred on. So that's kind of an issue. And not only that, but you can see the code is a little bit clunky. I mean, if we have to go back up here and basically call clear error and check error before every function, like clear error and then check error, that's going to just pollute our code and make it so much harder to read. Like, why would we want any of that? That's going to just burden us with error checking, which we should be doing just automatically all the time, right? So there are a few ways of dealing with this. For our first problem, it'd be nice for us to know the line of code on which this error actually occurred on. Now we can kind of do that manually ourselves. If we kind of resume our program here, so it is running, it is still kind of spamming all of this to the console. I did place a breakpoint here in this GL check error function to figure out what kind of value this was in hex. You can see if I look at the call stack and I double click over here, I know that it's happened on this line, which is GL draw elements. So I do kind of know what line of code it happened on. However, that involves me placing a breakpoint and all of that. It's not, not too fun. And also in this case, we kind of know what line it happened on anyway, because we're only checking one function for errors. But what we can actually do is get our actual debugger to just pause execution and break on the line that causes that error. Right, and we can do that by just using an assert, basically. An assertion is when you assert if something is true or false, and if that kind of condition is false, you typically like either write a message to the, to, to the console or just kind of stop execution of the program and kind of break on that line. So it's kind of like placing a breakpoint, but we can actually place a breakpoint through code, right? We can actually tell our kind of debugger, hey, if you run into this line of code here, into this function that I'm calling, break. Insert a breakpoint here and just break, right? It's pretty cool. We're definitely gonna talk more about assertions in the C++ series. I'll have a link up there once that video is made, but let's take a look at how we can actually do that. So to do that, I'm just going to kind of rewrite this check error function a little bit. I'm going to, first of all, get it to return a boolean. Let's just stop execution of our program as well. And I'll call this GL log call, okay? Because we'll add some more features to it in a minute. Now, if this does return an error, and in fact, as soon as it does, I'm just going to call return false here. Now you might kind of question the validity of this loop now. Why does this have to be in a while loop if you're returning from the first iteration? But this is just kind of to demonstrate for now. So I don't really care and then return true. So basically if we return false from this, it means that our GL call was not successful. I'm then going to come up here and I'm actually going to write a macro, which is our assertion, right? So define assert X. So all this is going to do is validate a condition. So we'll have to write it like this. If you kind of write it like this, it won't really work because of reasons. We'll have a video about C++ macros and all that. Again, I'll link that up there when that's actually made, but we have to write our condition wrapped in parentheses like this. And if this was false, I'm just going to call a function, which will basically insert a breakpoint at that, at that moment in code and just break the debugger. So this is an intrinsic to your compiler, which basically means that this function that you call here is going to be different 
for each compiler that you're using. When I cover assertions in the C++ series, I will show what the function is for like all compiles and all of that. I'm sure you can Google it anyway, but because we're using Visual Studio here and this isn't really about C++, it's about OpenGL, I'm just going to use the MSVC function, which is underscore underscore debug break like that. The underscore underscore kind of lets us know that it's a compiler intrinsic, which means that it's specific to MSVC and it won't work in Clang or GCC or any of those compilers. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's our assertion function. So what I can do now is basically where we have this GL log call over here at the bottom and this GL check error, well actually it's called log call now, let's just rename it to log call like that. I can assert that. So I'll write assert and I'll wrap this in parentheses like that and I'll hit F5 to run my program. So if this returns false, it should just break the debugger. And you can see, look at that. OpenGL.exe has triggered a breakpoint on this exact line. We know exactly now our program does not continue running and doesn't keep spamming the error, the error into our console. Our console just reads OpenGL error 1280, and we can see where that error occurred. How cool is that? Much better, but we can do a lot better than this. The next step is actually going to be just to get rid of having to call clear error and then log call after every function. Let's invent some kind of macro that does that for us. So if we go up to the top, where we define all of our macros, I'm going to define another one called GL call, right? X is going to be the, the function essentially that we're calling. And over here, the first thing that I'm actually going to do is call GL clear error to make sure that we clear everything. Now, I don't want to write all of this code on one line because it'll be hard to read. So I'm just going to add a backslash and then hit enter. This basically ignores the new line character so that we can continue writing this macro on another line. I'm then going to just write X comma, which basically will insert that function we've specified so that we call it. And again, another backslash. Now, one more thing I have to mention is make sure when you put the backslash, you don't insert a space and then enter. Otherwise, you, you still got the new line character there. You have to put a backslash and then with no spaces, press enter. And then finally, I'm just going to call GL log call, but this time actually inside an assertion. So like this, GL log call like that. And I'm not gonna put like a semicolon or anything over here because we don't need to. Because after we call GL call, we'll end it with a semicolon. All right, so now let's scroll down to our code here. And instead of having to call GL clear error and then asserting that log call, what we can actually do is just wrap this GL draw elements with a GL call, just like that. How cool is that? And now we can hit F5. All right, and we get the same result here, but you can see now it's even more clear. It's actually on this GL draw elements line. So we know exactly what's gone wrong. Now, the what, now one more thing we can actually do is this error message doesn't specify which file or line the actual error occurred on. We don't really need that because we're running through the debugger and it just breakpoints, right? And it's easy for us to see what file and line. But if we're running it without the debugger or anything like that, it would still be nice for the console, right, to somehow print out the file and line of code that this actual error happened on, maybe even the function name. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go back out of here. And what I'm actually going to do is make this GL log call accept some more parameters. So we'll add const char function, which will be the name of the function we tried to call with all of its arguments and everything. We'll add const char file, which will be the C++ source file where this, where this function was actually called from. And then finally int line. So what I'll do to this error is I'll add all of those details. So when we print our error message, I'll also add in the function, which will be just function. I'll actually move this down here so you guys can see. We'll add a space after that function. Then we'll add file then maybe a colon like that, and then the line of code. Okay, great. So now we need to fill all of that information in. So inside this GL log call, we can actually use macros to figure out which file and line we call this function from. And not only that, but we can also, since we are actually passing in this function, we can actually turn in whatever X is into a string. And that's how we'll print our function name. And so to do that, I'm just going to write hash in front of X, which turns it into a string. And then for the file, it's underscore underscore file in all caps. Now, unlike the debug break, this is not an intrinsic. It's, it should be supported by all compilers. So don't worry about that. And then finally for the line again, it's just underscore underscore line like that. Okay, pretty cool stuff. Let's try and run our code again. Now when this breaks, if we go back to our console, check this out we see GL draw elements with our actual parameters, GL triangle six, GL int and null pointer. And then we actually have a full path to this application.cpp source file, followed by the actual line of code 166, which you can see is the line of code that that breakpoint is on. How cool is that? So we now know exactly what's gone wrong, where, and what we've actually, like what 
what code we actually tried to call that failed because we're printing it all to the console. Pretty cool stuff. Now, a lot, now I know this is a lot to take in if you're not familiar with C++ macros, which is why that video, when it's ready, will be linked up there and all that. And I should do that probably very soon. Uh, but you can see with the power of C++ and macros, we can like really improve this OpenGL debugging. And specifically, the most useful feature here, to be honest, is that actual debug break. Just being able to break on that actual line via that assertion that we've kind of created is really, really useful because it kind of lets us know exactly where we've gone wrong. Now, what you should do now with this GL call is actually pretty much every OpenGL function we ever call so like GL gen, just everything, we should be wrapping that with GL call. So basically what I'm going to do here is just do that really quickly. Every single open GL function call surrounded, surrounded in GL call. Now, because I wrote this macro in a, in a very simple kind of way, there are a few flaws. For example, if we use a one line if statement, this isn't going to work because just the first line is going to be inside the if statement and these two won't be and all of that. You can fix that by just surrounding this in a scope or in like a do while zero loop and all of that again. I'm going to talk about that in the macros video. So kind of, so kind of take this function, this code that I've written here is just a really kind of basic, simple way of doing this. Also putting it in a scope isn't very preferable because if you actually have values being assigned, like if you have the shader code that we wrote over here, you can see that calling GL create program actually assigns it. So we can still do that inside GL call. Just make sure you do it like this. However, the issue is that if we were to wrap that in a scope program would be out of scope over here. So if we were to kind of put curly brackets like that around this to keep it all in one scope, then we have the issue of, of not really being able to use program over here because it's like if we wrapped program in its own scope, kind of like that, it wouldn't be accessible anymore as you can see here. So there are a few kind of setbacks that we, that you have to be aware of and all of that. I'm going to go ahead and add GL call to the rest of all these functions. That source code is available for patrons. If you support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel, you will receive basically the source code to every single episode, kind of episode by episode. And that will have all of this already written. Of course, I'll do that. I'm not going to waste your time and just, you know, write GL call on every single function in front of you because you kind of get the point. But anyway, that is basically OpenGL error checking, right? That's how I like to do it. I like to just wrap every single function call, every single OpenGL function call inside GL call and Basically that will just break point whenever I have an error. Um, GL debug message callback, we will talk about in a later episode because that is also very useful and kind of theoretically means we don't have to do all of this. Although I find I still like doing this because you do get the compatibility with earlier versions of OpenGL. And also there's nothing really wrong with this method. It's just that GL debug message callback does give you more information and is slightly more useful and all of that. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you can hit that like button. As I mentioned earlier, you can support this series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel and get some pretty cool rewards. Finally, we also have a Discord server where you can discuss this episode and all of that. The channel.com slash Discord is how you get an invite there. Uh, it's a really cool community where you can actually talk about everything you've seen this, in this episode. Let me know what you think about OpenGL error checking, or maybe if you have a really cool way of actually checking errors that isn't as cool as my way, then definitely leave a comment below or just in general what you do to to, to debug OpenGL because I know that it can be a huge issue and that's why I'm not, that's one of the reasons why I'm not the biggest fan of OpenGL. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.